to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Wa Rakakodash. Double honors to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone. Salutations to all you true, sincere brethren, pushing this purified truth, cleansing this wicked, defiled kingdom with this word, and to the rest of the church who believe as well. The water to Yahweh Shai, because without him, none of this would even be possible. Okay? So we're going to go into the book of Matthews 25. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So the lamps, what does the lamps represent? Okay, so let's jump to the book of Proverbs. This is the book of Proverbs 6 and 23. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are the way of life. Okay, so the lamp is symbolizing the commandment. Okay, or the lamps symbolizing the commandments. These laws are light. Okay, for the commandment is a lamp and the law is light and reproofs of instruction are are the way of life. So let's jump to the book of Ephesians. This is Ephesians 5 and 8. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light. And the Lord walk as children of light. So we are to walk as the children of light. The elect will walk as the children of light, which means you're going to follow after the law, statutes, and commandments the best that you can which is found where? In the word. So the light really symbolizes the word, which is found in the scriptures. Okay? The two-thirds of the nation of Israel, they're walking in darkness. We used to walk in darkness, those of us who have woken up to this truth. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light. Okay? So those who have the lamp Okay, are those who walk as the children of light. Why? This is the book of James 1 and 17. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. So that's why we have to be like the children of light. Because Yahweh himself is the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness neither shadow of turning okay so the reason why we have to uh walk with our lamps is because the heavenly father himself he is the father of lights so you yourself would need that light all right going into this word okay and many of us who wake up to this truth you might have the word but you might be missing one thing you're missing the whole word. You're, you're, you're really missing the whole truth. You might have bits and pieces. You might know the name Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, but then you're preaching that Esau can be saved. You might not be preaching that Esau can be saved, but then you're calling on Jesus. You might not be calling on Jesus, but then you're, you're saying his name is Yeshua. Okay? All of these false doctrines, you have to have the light and you have to have the oil. They go hand in hand. Okay? You have to have the light. Okay? And you have to have the oil. The oil is what keeps that light burning. Okay? Now, you can have the light, but without the oil, what's going to happen? The light's going to run out. Okay? It's not rocket science. So, we have to be... Uh, Walking as those who follow after the light, being Yahweh Shai. Which, you know, at the same time, walking with the light. Walking with our lamps in this dark place. Okay? Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. With whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning.
Okay, so not only is he the father of lights, let's jump to Hebrews 12 and 9. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Okay, so not only are you supposed to be under subjection under your earthly parents, okay, but more so your, your spiritual earthly parents, how much more the Heavenly Father, who is the Father of spirits? He's the Father of lights, okay, and we are to be as the children of the light. Okay, matter of fact, I got to pull out one more verse before I uh, read this again. This is 1 Thessalonians 5 and 5, I believe. Ye are all the children of light and the children of day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. So if you are of the elect, you are a, children of, you are a child of the light. Because as it says in James 1 and 17, okay, Yahweh is the father of lights. Ye are all the children of light and the children of day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Why? Because in order for you to be of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, you would have to be a child of the light. Okay? There is no in between. So going back to Hebrews now. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us and we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? Okay, so he's also known as the father of spirits, the father of lights, and the father of spirits. Okay, so let's jump to the book of Proverbs 20 and 27. The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Mercy and truth preserve the king. Well, that's going into something else so yeah proverbs 20 and 27 the spirit of man is the candle of the lord so uh the father of spirits okay which is yahweh guess what the spirit of man is the candle of the lord so your spirit is just like a light it's fire that's why the scriptures tell you how he made let me see if i can just pull it up and i'll come back to this I believe it's Hebrews 1 and 7. And of the angels, he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his ministers a flame of fire. So the spirit is fire. Okay? Spirit is fire. The, the spirit is energy. So when you go back to the book of Proverbs 20 and 27, the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. The Heavenly Father is the Father of Spirits. Okay? So, the Spirit is also represented as the light, the candle. So, you have to have the Spirit, the Spirit of the Lord. So, the candle represents the law, statutes, and commandments. It represents the Spirit of the Lord. It represents the Word of the Lord, the ways of Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai. Okay? The spirit of man is the candle of the Lord, searching all the inward parts of the belly. Okay? So let's jump all the way back to Matthews now. Where was I at? I think it was 3. Matthews 25 and 3. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. So the lamps, that's going into the law, statutes, and commandments. Okay, that's going into the spirit of the Lord. But guess what? You can you can uh, have the ways of the Lord. You can follow after the word of the Lord. But if you don't have the oil, what's going to happen? Okay, that 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 fire is going to burn out. Makes me think of another verse. I believe it's Revelations two and five. I could be wrong. Perfect. Revelations two and five. Remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen, and repent. And do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and I will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Okay, so we have to be humble in this truth. We have to repent. Okay, and understand that our fire 
is pretty much inspired by Yahweh Shai. Without, without Yahweh Shai, our fire would be quenched. Okay? So, yeah, it's one thing to have the fire, but you have to keep that fire burning, which is where the oil comes in, okay? They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. I'm going to jump down to verse 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, for your lamps, for our lamps are gone out. So what does that oil symbolize? Well, you have to go to the book of Proverbs 21 and 20. There is treasure to be desired, and oil in the dwelling of the wise. But a foolish man spendeth it up. Okay, so the oil goes into this understanding. Okay? So it's one it's one thing to have the word. It's another thing to have the word and understand it. The understanding is what keeps you in this truth. Being void of understanding is how you fall out, which goes into the stumbling blocks. And the Lord is setting stumbling blocks. Okay? There is treasure to be desired and oil. Okay? So the the wise virgins, they'll have that oil. They'll have that wisdom. But the foolish man, he won't have it. He, he won't even have the oil because he'll spend it up, which goes into him uh, not remaining in this truth. His, his candlestick being put out. Okay? There is a treasure to be desired in oil in the dwelling of the wise, but a foolish man spendeth it up. So let's go all the way back to Matthews again. Okay? Matthews 25 and 8. And the foolish said unto the wise, because the wise have their oil. Give us your oil, for our lamps are gone out. And why has it gone out? Because their, their oil was spent up. <laughs> okay? In other words, they're fools. But the wise answer saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Okay? Which shows how foolish they were. You can't blame someone else because you didn't come prepared. That's your own fault. Okay, don't try to be a burden to someone else and they're supposed to drop what they're doing to pretty much cover you. To hell with that, man. We all got to work for hours. Okay? And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. Verse 12, But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know ye not. So for a lot of you Israelites, you claim to have the lamp, but you don't have the oil or you don't have neither. You have to have the, the lamp and the oil. You can't just have one or the other. OK, so you have to have the, uh, the word and the understanding of the word. OK, long story short. And if you don't have those two, uh, Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah is not dealing with you. That's why it says here, but he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Okay? You got to you gotta have the whole truth, man. That's how serious this is. Matthew 7 and 22. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils? And in thy name done many wonderful works? So you have men out there prophesying in the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Thinking that they're going to be delivered. And they may come off as being righteous in the, in, the, uh, in the face of the world. Okay. But there's probably a hole in their doctrine somewhere. You might be calling on Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. But then uh, you're, you're preaching that Esau can be saved. You're preaching that all nations can be saved. You might be teaching in the names Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. But secretly, you're a sodomite. Okay? You might be serving Yahweh and Yahweh Shai when you're out in the open. But secretly, you're a pedophile. Secretly, uh, you don't believe in what you teach. It's just an outward thing. But inwardly, you're all messed up. Full of iniquity. So you're going to have many who, who do the works of the Lord. And they may come off as righteous. But then when they face Yahweh Shai, he's going to say, nigga, I don't know you. Okay? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. 
So here you have those who are preaching in the name, but at the same time, they're wicked as hell. Verse 26, and everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. So because you don't have Yahweh Shai as your foundation, the big bad wolf is going to blow your house down, man. And that big bad wolf is going into all the, the fierce judgments that the Lord is going to send to this place. And it's coming in many different forms. Now we know ultimately it's that nuclear wind. When that nuclear wind comes, your house is going to be blown down because you didn't build your house on the foundation, being Yahweh Shai. Okay, so many can claim to know the name and believe in the Lord, but really they wicked as hell, man. And the Lord, uh, he weighs out our hearts. The Lord weighs out our hearts. Okay, matter of fact, let's jump to um, Hebrews real quick. Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. So you're going to have many men who preach in the word, who, who's preaching the word, using the names Yahweh and Yahweh Shai, but deep down inside, they're really wicked, man. They're arrogant. They think they're something when they're nothing. They try to exalt themselves over their brethren and different things like that. But yet they're teaching the names Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. So people like that, the Lord is going to reject. Okay, if you're not of the elect, the Lord is going to reject you. And if you are of the elect and you have certain things about you that ain't right, the Lord is going to purge that out of you. Okay, he's going to humble you. All right. So the Lord discerns our thoughts. So you might be out there teaching, but if you ain't right in the mind, okay, it's going to be manifest eventually. You might be able to fool everyone else, but you can't fool Yahweh while Yahweh shy. Why? Because they weigh out the thoughts of men. Okay? What's that? Proverbs, uh, what, 21 and 2? Let me see. Every way, Proverbs 21 and 2, every way of man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord pondereth the hearts. Okay, so the Lord knows what he's doing, man. You can't fool the Lord. The Lord is weighing out your mind. He's he's discerning your thoughts. The Lord knows whether you're right or not. Just because you're out there in a the garment teaching the words of the Lord, the Lord knows what you're doing in your day by day. The Lord knows your thoughts. If you're thinking evil of your brothers, okay? The list goes on and on. The Lord, the Lord knows if you're his or if you're not his. This is John 14 and 17. Even the spirit of truth. Remember, the Lord is the father of spirits, okay, which also will make him the, the, the father of truth because the truth itself is a spirit, okay? Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot, let me go down a little bit, whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you, okay? So, Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai. They're not dealing with every single person. Not everyone can receive the spirit of truth. So not everyone can have their their uh, their their fire and their oil. Okay? You got to have that candle. Or really more so, you got to have that lamp. Okay? You got to have the fire and you got to have that oil. And if you don't have that, Yahweh Shai don't know you, man. He's not dealing with you. Okay? You didn't come prepared. You got to come prepared. Okay, the um, what do you call that? The um, uh, the blueprint has been laid out, so the understanding is out. But if you don't have the understanding, you're not meant to receive the understanding, because the understanding is a spirit, and that spirit is for the elect to know. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Because it seeth him not. So two thirds of our people don't know Yahweh Shai. Yeah, they're Israelites, but they don't know the Lord. Okay, neither does the world of Esau, neither does the world of Ishmael. Okay? No other nation, the Lord is not dealing with any other nation, period. But even within the nation he's dealing with, he's only dealing with the elect. Okay? Neither knoweth him, but ye know him, for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you. 
So let's go to John 10 and 3. To him the porter openeth, or the gatekeeper, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calleth his own sheep by name, and leadeth them out, and the sheep go unto the elect. Okay? Yahweh Shai is the one who leads the sheep. And when he putteth forth his own sheep, he goeth before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Okay, so the spirit of truth whom this world can't receive is because they don't hear his voice. They don't know his voice. Yahweh Shai's voice is alien unto them. Just like if you own an animal, if you call your animal by name, your animal should be aware and come to you because they know your voice. So the same in this parable, okay, with the sheep. The sheep, being the elect, hear Yahweh Shai's voice, which is found through this word. And it's brought out through the men who he has set up and who he is dealing with. Okay, so if you don't have the uh, the oil, and if you don't have the the light, the Lord's not dealing with you, man. Because if you hear His voice, you would know. You need to have your wedding garment. You need to have that oil, and you need to have the the fire, man, for the lamp. Okay, and if you don't have those things, evidently uh, you didn't hear His voice when He called. Okay. Let's jump all the way down to 27. John 10 and 27. Matter of fact, let's start at 26. But ye believe not because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice and I know them and they follow me. So it's clear. If you don't have the understanding, if you have that spirit of rejection and scoffing, Yahweh Shai is not dealing with you, man. So you're not a part of the marriage okay this is for those who have the uh the light and the oil man okay and you need the oil to keep that light burning because we're in a very dark place so if that light goes out you're gonna stub your toe you're gonna trip all right you're gonna be walking around like a blind man but this truth gives us that vision and that's why as the man of the lord we're also known as visionaries and in order to have vision, you need the light. Okay? Let's go to John 4. And I'll probably close it out here. But the hour, John 4 and 23. But the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father, who is the Father of spirits. Who shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. And, and truth is the actual spirit itself. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. Okay? So, you got to have the whole truth. You can't just know you're an Israelite and that's it. You can't just uh, call Esau the devil and that's it. You can't just know that America is Babylon and that's it. Okay? You have to have this truth. And a, and a verse that I quote a lot is John 8 and 32. Okay, because through this truth is how we are going to be set free. Okay, and if you are not of the truth, you are not of the marriage. All right, long story short to keep it simple and sweet. Okay. God is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. And I think we should actually close it out going back to Matthew's. Matthew 25, and we'll start at we'll start at 11. Matthew 25 and 11. <clears throat> no, 10. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him. And who's the bridegroom? Yahweh Shai. To the marriage. And the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, those without the oil, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Which means what? You should be doing this work. You should be involved. Okay? Have the whole truth. Don't be 
uh, dabbling in diverse doctrines because, see, to be a virgin spiritually means you're not dealing with any other philosophy. Okay? You're only dealing with your husband. Okay? You're only dealing with Yahweh. You're not dealing with any other gods out there, which are nothing more than false gods. Okay? So the elect, they're getting prepared for the marriage. And when the marriage has come, the, the elect will have the right attire and the right things that they need for the marriage. Everyone else, that door is going to be slammed in your face, which really is that door to repentance. All right. So Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. Kahala, Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai.